once we have the material and it's on us to kind of put it together, it's clear what that puzzle is going to be when you're done. Then it's just focused time and attention. I create every day. That's just a part of who I am and what I do every day in my lifestyle and my life. I don't really look at it as a job. It's just who I am and it's what I do. I feel like every true, genuine, like, purist would never finish, even when it's out, right? You know, so right. it's. I think that's just, that's that. Okay, so quick recap before we jump in here. This video series, this story is based on the idea that I think a lot of creative people have projects that they have tried to kind of execute on in the past, but have feel now like they sit just off in the distance. Although there's stuff that we can execute on in all diff other different parts of our lives, we can't quite seem to overcome um, whatever it is that's stopping us. So in this video series, I've been taking on my my own quote unquote impossible project, which is to just get a short cohesive EP together, um, which is something that I've tried many, many times um, for, for, for a long period of my life to kind of get done. And it's always started, you know, maybe got into the middle stage, collected a few little bits, but I've never been able to actually execute on getting that kind of cohesive work together and putting it out. Now, as I said in the first video, this series is honestly, it's about serving you. And I hope that my own experience here will create a kind of avatar for you and will push you to push you and also maybe give you some extra tools to to go forward and, and overcome those uh, possible sticking points in your own journey. For people who did watch part one, it's been about a month since making that. And in all honesty, there's been a lot of movement in that month and it's been quite, it, it has been right on the edge in terms of me holding on um, to the kind of reins of keeping on pushing forward um, with creating this EP. It certainly hasn't been able to be one of the main uh, time priorities um, or maybe space priorities in my life, but I do actually hope that hearing from a lot of this audience and, and listening when people kind of talk to me on the email or in the comments, hopefully my experience here will actually reflect more closely and be more useful to a lot of people in this community who I know their their creative passions, the goals that they want to achieve are super important to them, but also have to be really balanced with the all the other demands um that life obviously has on people we're all in a race right everyone's in yeah. such a hurry all the time you've been able to meditate through that experience you knew that this was moving at the pace you were comfortable with for me i always try to remind myself when people try to make me feel competitive or try to make me feel like oh well you gotta be you know you gotta be this you gotta be that i'm like that's that's cool and everything but at the end of the day i i am who i am and i'm gonna do what I came to do and I feel confident about that and um, constantly reminding myself like why I started doing this in the first place. It was never for this. So. so yeah, before I jump in, I wanted to say that over the next couple of weeks, I, I will be finishing this piece. I don't want to put up some ruse here and suggest that I'm a professional musician. I've made this because it's something that I love to do in my own time. And yeah, again, I think that reflects a lot of people um, within here. With that being said, and also to be honest, overcoming a lot of thought in my mind about the best way I should manage this, I am deciding that I'm gonna put it out for free um, on Bandcamp over the next couple of weeks. I wanted to give it to people who have invested in this series a bit and who would like to check out the music that I've been talking about. But the reason I'm using Bandcamp there is I do wanna offer the opportunity as well for people who have enjoyed my videos and enjoyed this series to give some money for the EP. If you link over there now, I've put the first song of the EP available for those who pre-order that. And if you do pre-order it, you'll be able to listen to that today, now, and you'll also get the rest of the project delivered directly to you. Don't worry, it's not that deep. You worry yourself foolishly. 
Don't worry, it can make you shy I hold hope for your ecstatic afterlife I'm very confident in my honesty here to say that I'm not trying to make a quick buck with this, whatever anyone might think. And although within the framework of YouTube, there's this narrative that people make loads of money. I don't make loads of money doing this. Um, so if you do want to give a little gift back to the channel for the, enjoying the videos or enjoying this series, um, and you'd like to get that piece of work that I've made in return for that um, in all its glory, then um, yeah, Go ahead and pre-order that today um, and, and that's exactly what you'll be doing. So at what point do, does one decide, okay, like now's the time to get into that more narrow focus of, of effort. Like we've got it. Let's run with this because there is a component of the creative process that involves packaging and finishing. And mm. um, is that part less satisfying to you or is it just all part of the same larger arc? It's all part of the same. It's it's nice. There's a good feeling. There's usually a good feeling when something is done. On the one hand, it's, um, it's a commitment because up until the time that you say it's done, you can keep experimenting and changing it. You know, if you, if you think, well, maybe tomorrow I can make it better, then it's not finished. And you keep thinking that for a long time, you can do that forever and never, 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 never put out anything. Put out, put out, put out, put out. Part 1, the TLDR for finishing everything you start. If there's one thing that I would like anyone who watches this series um, to take away, uh, one simple thing, um, it's this. If you've struggled to finish your projects or goals in the past, maybe because you couldn't make them as well as you wanted, or you got stuck in the middle stage and lost focus, this story doesn't have to continue. And there is a, a shift that you can make to change this. When we put time into our art, there's a whole lot of self-talk that can come along with it around outcomes. And it's not our fault. This is kind of the culture we swim in. And, you know, outcomes are important in other areas of life. But it's this idea around outcome that is going to be so important in, in reframing this stuff. If I had one piece of advice then, which kind of encapsulates all others, it would be to make the requirements and expectations around this project goal smaller and more specific and then make the only parameter for success, your single point of focus, the idea of actually executing on and delivering this project. Most of these songs on Mahal are a little bit on the simpler side, little to no guitar overdubs or vocal overdubs or doubling. Like again, What For had so much layering, so many synths in the background and strings and it was orchestral and I wanted Mahal to be just like raw. You hear all four things going on and like little reverb and delay on everything. So those are sort of the un, the unseen parameters for this record. Yeah, the kind of thing that you've got in your mind, but you don't need to overthink it because you've self-imposed these rules and you're just going to stick to them because that's the vibe you're feeling <laughs> at that time, yeah, really. Yeah, Although as artists or creatives, we might think that our next project, this thing that we're involved in, is gonna be the one where we find, you know, great um, creative uh, breakthrough or breakthroughs around outcome. The truth of it is we don't know at all. All we can trust is that every time we finish and deliver something, we are stepping closer to those creative breakthroughs and kind of taking control of the single most important thing that we, we can uh, take control of, which is continuing to build our momentum. Sometimes you work for, you know, you think you, you have it, and then you work for it for a month or two months, three months longer, trying to take this little moment that was so special and amplify it or place it in the right position or, um, find a way to build around it and you realize after months of working on it, actually it was the best version of it was in that moment when I first liked it. Mm -hmm. And that's the real version. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be like you could do a little drawing, a little sketch, a doodle. And then you think, oh, this would make the greatest painting. 
And then you'd spend a long time working on the painting and you look at the painting and you look at the doodle and it's like, the doodle is really better than the painting. I spoke about expectations and setting up simple requirements in the first video. And that's absolutely been absolutely key um, in terms of me being able to push forward with my, with my own work here. There's a classic part of a creative project where people fall off and it stopped me in the past. And I still have loads of stuff on my desktop as we speak. Um, you know, projects that I've started, put hours of work into maybe, and then they've reached this kind of classic part, this this problematic middle or sticky middle part um, where you reach a kind of, you know, different reasons why you, you, st you, just, you just fall off. So this sticky middle bit is where that idea of momentum over perfectionism the the rubber really hits the road in terms of in terms of this concept i don't mean to judge i too have felt this <sighs> to be honest there were times in this project where i really didn't like the work that i was doing i thought it wasn't good and it wasn't worth continuing this is the truth of what lies behind that focus on momentum. At times you won't be inspired. You're not gonna like what you're doing and your, you know, quote unquote passion project is gonna feel like work. You're gonna be pushing something forward that you don't absolutely love or believe in at that moment. And you will have to rely on the promises that you've made to yourself in the past to just crack on and get it done. Something that helped me massively with my work um, and overcoming these times where I didn't really have any belief in it, but I was trying to maintain that promise of finishing it, was having a consistent time each day where I did the project, um, no matter how I was feeling about it. For me, it was first thing in the morning and it was literally just an hour that whatever else was going on, I knew that I would use that hour to continue to push that project. It didn't matter how little I felt like the work I was doing was good um, or whatever else I had to do in that day. I would always know that I would turn up in that hour and push the work forward. What I got done in those sessions was obviously the key thing of continuing that momentum and having that consistent place just gave me the sense that despite maybe the success or lack of success of, of the outcome of the project, there was a belief that it would get done. It wasn't just gonna drop off. Now this idea of creating a habit isn't any new one. The only kind of thing I'd wanna to add to it today would be to think about making it as frictionless as possible. For me, that means combining it with that time in the day where I know it's gonna be quiet and I know I'm gonna be drinking my first cup of coffee of the day where I usually feel like I have a good energy and I'm pretty productive. I recently had someone email me who said, how can I push forward with my work um, when I've got this nine to five job? And something that came into my head here that reflects some of my own experience is that actually we can reframe this and recognize that the consistency of having other commitments can sometimes help us to carve out a real consistency for our own work. I'm sure there's better ways that other people have done this, but in my own past where I've been writing long pieces and I've had a nine to five job, I've found, for example, my lunch hour to be a time where I've been able to guarantee that uh, five days a week, I'm gonna be basically in the same place and have kind of like 30, 35 minutes where I can sit on my laptop or have a notebook and push forward with that writing project. It's up to you how you prioritize your work, of course, but if it's just a norm that you'd be breaking that's holding that behavior back, taking your keyboard in and finding a, a quiet place in the office to do 40 minutes practice, or whatever it is, if it's just breaking a norm that's holding you back from consistently pushing forward with, with something you're passionate about, then for that, I can clearly say, you know, uh, that might be worth pushing back on. Part two, what would it look like if you were getting paid for it? 
So the idea of taking our creative work seriously and our creative project goals seriously, even as amateur artists, is something that I really see as important um, in terms of the satisfaction we have with our work and also just helping us actually get this stuff done. There's a clip I always come back to when I think about this stuff, and it's with the orchestral soundtrack artist Hans Zimmer. Well, there is there is a struggle. There's a you know there's a blank page and the fear that comes with the blank page and the all the demons that sit on your shoulder and tell you you're no good and you should just quit and you should phone the director now and just tell him you can't do it. And and that's you know that that that's that's scary times. And then you you then the work starts happening and then you, you know an idea starts happening and you and it starts to sort of turn in the right direction. And that whole process, that working with the director, um, talking about story, um, all these half-finished things which inspire a different direction. I mean, it's that, it's, it's, it's process. Process is the greatest thing. When Zimmer gets a multi-million pound contract and 15 months to do a project, there is gonna be this sense of seriousness that comes along with that. And it's going to signal to him that he can really sit with the piece and approach it in a certain way. He might contact other artists um, from different, maybe, cultural backgrounds to try and learn about the different scales that they use in their own practice. Or spend three months building a template of um, specifically recorded sounds that he wants to use in the kind of tapestry of this soundtrack. I don't want you to play flutes. Can you make the sound of wind rushing through? Yeah. Well, well, plus a lot of things were built. There were many journeys to the hardware store. I PVC made... is your friend. PVC piping. I actually made a subcontra bass duduk by putting this into a very long tube of PVC. And I remember one time I sent him 89 tracks of just dudukes. Because nobody's ever done it. You're used to seeing 32 violins, you know, 14 celli, six basses, your normal Beethoven type orchestra. But imagine you did it all out of those instruments. What would that sound like? Amazing. The key here is that the money that he's being given immediately and easily imbues the project with a sense of that seriousness and weight and kind of allows his process to open up and, and gives breath to, to putting uh, real time and effort into that process and valuing it. The reality is Zimmer could probably go to his piano and write eight melodies um, straight off and the majority of people who watch that movie or the critics who reflect on it probably might not even have any knowledge that he's done that, that he's created that piece in a single day. What all that process and seriousness and um, breath gives to the project, however, is an ongoing sense of a depth behind the work and an ongoing sense of value that we put into our work. And it's that um, which, as amateur artists, I, I wouldn't want people to lose. Success is when you seek the validation from yourself. To me, that's what I'm, I work on, the genuine feeling of you having an idea, working on an idea, and putting it out. And when you just find the validation in that, to me, that's the highest level of success because it can't be thwarted or imbued with other people's feelings or doubts. What I'd ask people to think of when they approach their projects is what would that seriousness or depth of work look like to you? If someone was paying you for eight months to complete this um, and, and you were on the clock in that way in terms of society valuing it with that, with that financial amount, what would be the difference in your process and what can you pull in from, from that to your process anyway. For me, one of my main things that I wanted to do with this project and one of my main requirements I had from it was to try and imbue it with a sense of place. What I could pull into my process then, which would align with this idea of the seriousness and adding weight to it, 
was that instead of just pulling in kind of sound effects that I could have found online in probably a couple of hours, maybe even 30 minutes, I wanted to actually spend the time to go out to the locations that had inspired the writing of a lot of the pieces on, on the EP and to actually collect those sounds myself and spend that time doing that. I'm standing outside and facing the water now, so I decide to walk away from Boiler House towards the riverfront and the new arcade that they've just opened there. And as I walk through the time... Without the environment, I mean, there's really nothing... I mean... In my opinion, you could be under a rock making music all day and make some decent music, but I do feel like <laughs> when you encompass or when you embody what's around you and, you know, you manifest what, you, what you're receiving and shit like that, like, which is usually your environment, what's all around you, you know, it's just, it's a, it has to influence you somehow. Again, the reality is that I could have just got these sounds in a very short amount of time and there wouldn't have been any kind of reflection in 98% of people who listen to it about, oh, those have come from the internet. Saying that, I do, however, know that by going out and taking part in that process, it's gonna give the project more weight for me personally um, and more value for me personally when I look back on it in the future. And yeah, even if it's just me who knows, the whole, the whole feeling of it is a push towards quality, um, a push towards depth, and a push towards actually, yeah, trying to just act with with quality and um, a sense of purpose. Your hobby isn't throwaway just because someone hasn't validated it with money. And in fact, to me, as I've spoken on this channel before, how I think, let's say, you're you're sitting at home or somewhere working on your your piece of art something you're passionate about and there's someone else in the room a young person or anyone really seeing you do that and spend all that time and, and your effort on it if there is some conception that there's going to be a financial payback for that that actually makes it really easily understandable in in the paradigm of this you know this simple outcome and it's actually a lot more powerful if someone looks at you doing something and sees the passion and effort and real love that you put into it um, without having any um, sense of, you know, that loop open in their mind of, hold on, what is this person getting from this? And having to think more deeply about that. That's a much more powerful act um, at the end of the day. As I try to formalize my music into a naming scheme, I recognize how much shame comes over when I admit to myself that it's about me. I've been thinking about this in terms of creative work and how often we try to obscure ourselves within it. That impetus to hide ourselves when we share our work is probably a good thing to investigate or fight. This is the impetus that over time can lead our work into mimicry and safer paths where we do what a form or genre demands of us instead of having the confidence to find something more true and actually step forward ourselves. The shame is pretty obvious really. When we look at our own voices or our own selves, we often feel like we need to step back and not be too loud in that way. But when I look around at my friends or family, I can recognize how useful it is and valuable to me when they step forward and express themselves and their own understanding of their experience. So I wonder why when we turn that around on ourselves, we start to frame it as superfluous or self-indulgent. The reality is that obscuring yourself allows you a safer, less vulnerable path the confidence and focus to make something about you presents a much harder challenge. How could it be about me, but be real enough and true enough not to make it sound like bullshit to my ear? In short, you can't fake it when you make work about yourself. And that's a far more tough and vulnerable place to be 
but in the end might be the path to creating the most value. As soon as you get into, while you're making something, getting into any kind of self-censorship, yeah. it, you're really creating a dangerous, um, it's like you feel like you can't be yourself. You know, you yeah. can't be you. And that's a very dangerous place to be for a creative person. Do you feel, when you listen to it, does it feel scary or does it give you a sense of freedom? It gives me, it definitely gives me a sense of freedom. I think it's scary because it, just because it, it's so specific and it, and it says things, it like, something like, I remember that day, a lot of things had happened in that day and as soon as I got back to my hotel room, I wrote this song. Mm. So it was word for word, everything I, everything I did and everything I felt in that exact moment. It's like you're getting it out. Exactly, like expressing it through something positive and something you're that people can listen beautiful. to. something beautiful. Exactly. And then I wanted like, Part three, focus on this, 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 this. Okay, the next strategy or thinking that I want to hand over is another super simple one, um, but in my projects has been responsible for dragging me around and dragging me away from so much work that I've tried to complete in the past. And that's this, when you're trying to push forward with these projects um, and try and keeping that momentum going with that piece of work you're doing, other things are gonna come into your head. Um, things that at that time seem like better ideas, um, things that you think, uh, oh, I could just do this alongside the project and then slowly it starts to maybe pull you away. And so, yeah, the simple statement here is just don't do anything else. The reality is in that morning session, you know, after I've, when I'm sitting there having my coffee or whatever, if something comes into my mind of, oh no, why don't you try this bit of writing out um, today and, you know, why don't you not work on the song project? Once I overcome that and actually begin um, working on the lyrics or, you know, uh, going to the piano and putting down a little, you know, the back backing for a verse or whatever, the next thing that I need to do for the EP project, once I actually begin doing it, it will feel like it was the best thing to do that day. It will become clear in that session or, you know, down the line that, it's lucky that I had the focus to continue doing that that day. Um, all you need to do is overcome that urge or that thought that, oh no, I might just try out this other thing um, this morning. So once you've overcome that, um, yeah, it will come to light that, that it was good that you did. What I wanna come back to here is the idea of the completion of this thing as building a model of success that's going to help other things in the future. And so we can always remember that if something's trying to come in and help and try and, you know, say, oh, you should be doing this, it's trying to make us deviate from finishing this main project. Um, we can remember that by, you know, finishing this thing we're working on is going to make it more likely that we're going to be able to finish this other thing in the future. Um, and if we do deviate from working from this thing that we're working on, who's to say that that model of being pulled around and and struggling to finish things isn't going to continue onwards when we go into this other idea? So yeah, execute the thing at hand and maintain those promises to yourself. And they recognize that even if it's not the exact right thing, finishing this thing is the start of actually having success in those future projects. Once your main project is very nearly done, starting something else may help you kind of actually deliver that main project. But for the entire process of, of building it, the main stage, just don't start anything else. I've found it useful formalizing how I build this EP in the same way that I do with work that I've done in a professional context 
that I have been able to execute on. This is aesthetic really, but it properly helps me. For example, I've written the EP into a notes document from top to bottom and color highlighted it so it looks exactly like one of my video scripts. As a progression from this, I'm thinking that one day I'd actually like to try and make and build some music inside of Adobe Premiere, which is the, the software that I usually use for video making. This is a bit of a thought experiment, but in this way, we can pull our projects into more comfortable grounds for us. And although the outcomes might be less industry formalized, in my example, if I made music in Adobe Premiere, I'd find ways to do things that would work and ideas that would come to me that would be unique to that process. By pulling these projects into more comfortable places for us, we can make those more unique and make them more frictionless and easy to get done. I wonder when making the video what it would mean for people watching to bring their creative practice into their more comfortable or home environments. And I always say, don't just use fashion as the genre. I just looked at where no one else was gonna go. So I would encourage you to identify what makes you unique and what do you see that no one else sees. Um, and that's where you're gonna be, that's where you're gonna make a name for yourself. The goal was for people to say, almost feel like there's something wrong when it comes on. Like what's, this doesn't belong, right. you know, this is a mistake. Right. Um, so my hope was for people to, you know, WTF. Yeah. That was my, <laughs> that was yeah. what I was hoping for. Yeah. Part four. This project won't define you. Deliver it and move on. People will ask me like, hey, like what was your big break? And I'll say, you know, there's never been a big break for me. You know, I'm not that type of artist. There's been lots and lots and lots of little increments. And for me, what they feel like is I give this analogy of being in a rowboat and, you know, kind of pulling in my oars, putting down the anchor and rocking the boat. And when you rock that boat, all these ripples appear and those ripples kind of get bigger and bigger and, and further and further away from you. And at some point they're making an impact that you can't see. And then they're coming back to you in the form of these various types of projects or opportunities. If you are a creative who's trying to make projects and hope that they'll connect with an audience, you don't have to, but if you do want your work to connect with others, if you do feel like you want it to have a life beyond you, um, then you do need to just finish these things and, and deliver them. Often I think as a diversionary tactic, people will try and make this piece of the project super complex and they'll they'll tell themselves that, you know, before the the novel, before they, they release their novel, package it up and send it out, they need to have a certain size audience on Facebook or whatever. Now, yeah, if we're trying to strategically make this piece of work a New York Times bestseller or try and make, um, you know, get it so high on Spotify that we're actually getting any kind of money off um, streaming services in any way, then yeah, we are going to have to maybe be strategic in the way that we release our stuff. But at the end of the day, I think for most creative people, that stuff can sit down the line. Um, and really it's about trying to just pull away from all the complexity and just deliver it in some form. If you do get traction, you can deliver it again in another form. And, and in this situation, just get it done and deliver it in some form. Now, yeah, this can be the stage just before we're gonna release the project that it can be useful to start something else. To use whatever the next project is gonna be as motivation to finish the one you're working on now. Like, I'm working on this, I'm spending all of my time on this thing, it's really good, I believe it can be better, but there's this other thing that I really wanna make. And if I keep tinkering with this one, I'll never get to make the other one. So using other projects as a impetus to finish something and release it into the world's a good one. 
where that's super useful is it means that when that work does go out over here, I'll be less connected um, to its success or failure or whatever you want to call that because I will have already started and be excited about the path of this next project. Um, so yeah, that, that can be a bit of a kind of trick to get us over that, that, com that complex that we might put in or uh, around actually kind of letting this thing go. This is Indoor Voice. All right, I want to bring this into land now and time to thank the paid subscribers um, who support me over on the Patreon and on the paid um, Substack um, who are helping me make this material for for all the people who, who get some value from it. And yeah, with that said, um, as I say, I hope this pushes some people forward and tell me about your own projects in the, in the comments um, if you'd like. And yeah, uh, good luck with that work and see you next time. This is Indoor Voice.